Number 61, integrated concepts. Figure 18.57 shows an electron passing between two charged metal plates that create an 100 Newton per Coulomb vertical electric field perpendicular to the electron's original horizontal velocity. Uh, the initial speed of the electron is 3 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, and the horizontal distance it travels in the uniform field is 4 centimeters. Letter A, what is its vertical deflection? Right. Let it be. What is the vertical component of the final velocity? So I, I don't know if I'm going to answer A before B. We'll we'll see how we'll see how the problem turns out. All right, but we might uh, I might rearrange the order. All right. So basically, um, this electron here is moving through a uniform field, and you know, as soon as a charged particle moves through an electric field, there will be a force that is exerted on that charge. Okay. Think about it. If this electron is in the field, right, and as it as this electron is traveling through. Here's a positive plate, here's a negative plate. What's going to attract the negative charge and repel the negative charge? Well, the positive plate will attract it, negative plate will repel it, so therefore there's an upward force. Now, interestingly enough, that the force here isn't going to change. The force is always going to be directed upward on this electron. So let me just show the electron right here, and I'm going to show the force acting upward here. We'll call it the force on that electron, F sub E, right? And that force is produced by the electric field. Now the question is, doesn't it kind of matter how long this electron will be within the plate or how long it's experiencing the force, right? Think about, right, if we think about that, the longer this electron takes to travel from left to right, the longer the force will be acting on that electron. And probably then the greater the deflection should be right, and also the greater the final velocity should be of that electron. Specifically, right, not only total, but definitely its vertical component. So my first question is, how long is it in the field, okay? What's the time, how long is, the, is this thing in the field for? Well, what do we know about it? Well, we know the velocity of it, the horizontal velocity, okay, is going to be, uh, we'll call that the initial x, value, and that's going to be 3.00 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And the uh, distance or displacement it's going to move is going to be 4 centimeters, or aka 0 .00, oops, 0 0.04 meters. How do I find time when I know these variables? All I got to do is the simple velocity formula. V is equal to, right, x over t. So it's 3 times 10 to the 6th is going to be equal to 0 0.04 all over t solve this thing for t, and we realize it's going to be 0.04 divided by 3 times 10 to the 6th, okay? So we have now the time here, point, uh, 1.33, it's repeating, times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. So that's how long, that's how long the, uh, the negative charge here is going to be in that electric field, okay? So now, now that we know the time, the time doesn't it doesn't matter you know we calculate the time from the x component which is great but the time knows remember this is back to kinematics so the time knows no frame more or less right time is going to be the same in the x frame and the y frame it doesn't matter okay so what i what i realize now is i'm basically now going to shift my focus and start talking about well if this thing is going to be deflected upward at some point right as it's showing here I know that there must be some vertical force, and that force is being, or I should say that force is producing an acceleration then in the y direction, right? So now I start to change gears. So now I'm going to start thinking about the y, uh, y direction of this problem, okay? What do I know about the initial velocity in the y direction? Well, it's zero because it's purely traveling horizontally. What about its final velocity in the y direction? Well, it definitely will be something. It definitely won't be zero. How long is a certain, or how long, well, let me first ask the, this question. What is the acceleration in the y direction? Well, we don't know. Um, what is the time, or what is the displacement? How far does it move in the y direction? Oh, we don't know. And last but not least, do we know the time duration over which we're talking about you know, accelerations, velocities, and stuff. Yes, that's what we just calculated. 1.33 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. So it almost looks like we don't know really anything. How can we do this? Well, the first thing is I'm going to kind of focus on this acceleration part because like I mentioned, the acceleration that this object is experiencing in the y direction is exactly 
related to the electric force that it's experiencing in that y direction. So now I start thinking, well, how is force and acceleration related? Well, I know that they're related via this equation, right? F is equal to ma. So the electric force acting on that electron will be equal to the mass of that electron multiplied by the acceleration of that electron. So I am after the acceleration of that electron. I realize that it's going to be the force that's acting on that electron divided by the mass of the electron. I don't know the force, though. But do I know something about how I can calculate the force? Meaning, do I know forces related to what are the other things that are in the problem here? Well, I know that the electric field strength is equal to the force divided by the force that's acting on the charge divided by the charge value, right? So I know that the force here is going to be equal to the electric field strength multiplied by Q. Do you know the electric field strength? Well, yeah, they told it to us, right? It's 100 newtons per coulomb. So that means that I can find, so that's going to be 100 newtons per coulomb. And then what's the charge? Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about an electron. What's the charge of an electron? i got to memorize it. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. Okay, and voila, so now we found F sub E. We found the electric force that's acting on this electron. So it's 100 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and that's going to be, I don't know, why did I need to calculate for that? Sometimes, sometimes I'm just running through this, I'm not really thinking. Um, so this is going to be just in terms of Newton. So we actually now know the electric force, right? So now what I realize is now I can actually calculate the acceleration of this electron since I know the force, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 17, and I know the mass of the electron. What is it? 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. You guys want to be doing enough practice where you're just memorizing those values by doing the practice, not by sitting there and actually memorizing the values, okay? You've seen it so many times, basically, is what I'm saying. So 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31, we're dividing it by that value. And here we're going to get now that the acceleration of that electron is equal to about 1.76-ish times 10 to the 13th. And that's meters per second squared. Now that is the acceleration, right? So when I go back to here, when I go back, I am going to now plug in my acceleration in the y direction. So that's 1.76 times 10 to the 13th meters per second squared. Now, can I find the deflection? I guess. Can I find that? Well, we got to think. How do we find it? And I'm actually going to go in order. So I'll do A first, okay? So it says, what? It, now here's the question. It says, what is its, what is its vertical deflection? Does that mean, like, what's the angle? Are they looking for the angle here? Is that what they mean by deflection? Do they mean how far upwards is it going to move in the X, uh, in the Y direction? Uh, honestly, I, I, I don't know, right? What is it? What does deflection mean? Right? Is it an angle measurement or is it an actual displacement measurement? I think that's kind of open to interpretation here. So um, I'm going to find I'm going to find just the uh, the uh, y value. So what I realize is that if I know the initial, if I know the acceleration, and I know the time, and I'm going to try to find the distance, how do I relate those all together? Well, via this equation, right? That the displacement is equal to vit plus one half at squared. So this whole thing goes to zero because the initial velocity is zero. So then it's one half times the acceleration, which is 1.76 times 10 to the 13th times the time, 1.33 times 10 to the minus eighth, and that whole thing is squared. So let's calculate it. I'm going to try to use the exact value. So it's one half multiplied by that exact acceleration, multiplied then by 1.33333, right? It was repeating times 10 to the minus eighth and square that. And we get a value here of about 0, so 1.56 times 10 to the minus 3. And that's in terms of meters. So about 1.56 millimeters. Okay. So now that's the, dis that's, ba I, I, I don't, why did I, I probably should have used the letter Y here. I mean, it doesn't really matter what we call it. I'm so used to using displacement as X. But technically, this is in the Y direction. So let me just call that Y, okay? I did X sub Y over here, but let me just call it Y. Um, so now we just found the vertical uh, displacement of it, okay? And, uh, in, yeah, so that's how far it's going to be displaced, uh, well, deflected upward, okay? That's how much it's going to be displaced. Again, the term deflected, what do they mean? Want, what do they want? The angle? Maybe. So why don't we now uh, do, so let's take a look at letter, so that's letter A, and then let's do now letter B. It says, 
what is the vertical component of its final velocity? So again, I'm just thinking through the things that I know over here, and now I can find that vertical component simply by doing VF is equal to VI plus AT, right? Simple formula here. Final velocity is equal to the initial, which is zero, plus the acceleration, which was 1.76 times 10 to the 13th. Multiply then, since I'm running out of space, 1.33 times 10 to the minus eight, and let's see what we get. So let's take out the calculator. I'm going to use that exact value, then multiply that by 1.3333 times 10 to the minus 8. And what do we get? We get a final velocity here of about 2.34 times 10 to the 5. And that will be in meters per second. So that is the final velocity in the y direction, right? Because all of these were y values. Y, 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 y. Why am I doing this? I'm not really sure. So uh, that's letter b okay and then letter c at what angle oh there we go so at what angle does it exit so now basically if you know uh so remember so for letter c what do we know we know the final velocity we know the final velocity in the y direction right so let's pretend so basically what i what i'm going to do is draw actually you know what I'll do? i'm going to go up here guys let's draw like a little coordinate here okay so what do we know about the um, velocity, the final velocity at that point in the y direction? Well, we know it is pointing directly upward and it has a value of 2.34 times 10 to the fifth, right, meters per second. What about the x component at that point? Well, it's exactly equal to the initial x because there was no acceleration, right? in that x direction. This is almost similar to like a reverse free fall problem, if you will. Okay, the x velocity doesn't change at all. So this is going to be 3 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. So how do you find then this angle that these two vectors produce, right? Or the resultant? That's easy, right? We can just use that resultant formula. So the resultant formula is going to be equal to the square root of the x value squared. So that's 3 times 10 to the 6th squared plus then the y value squared 2.34 times 10 to the fifth and that's squared square root the whole thing and that resultant vector which is technically the resultant velocity actually wait we didn't even need to find i'm doing way more work than necessary i just realized so anyway i'm not going to calculate it but this this would have given you the resultant velocity okay the overall magnitude it's calculated if you will if I have to know the angle, remember the angle, the tangent of the angle is going to be the y value over the x value. So that should have simply had been 2.34 times 10 to the fifth, all divided by 3 times 10 to the sixth. And then theta solving this, you got to do the inverse tan basically, right? So inverse tan of 2.34, well, let me do the exact values. That value divided by then... What was it? 3 times 10 to the 6? And we get a value of about 4.46. Uh, really small angle. Okay, so we get a value here of about 4.46. Uh, and that will be in terms of degrees. And that's it. All right. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out by subscribing and hitting the like button. All right. And uh, maybe even telling your friends if you like. We appreciate it very much. Thank you.